Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jackie Rowe, and I'm one of the marketing managers here at Cisco Meraki. And today we have quite an exciting webinar to present to you. And it's going to be with RED, which is a global enterprise. So I will let uh, Luke, who is our guest speaker today, talk a little bit more about that when we get into his section in just a few minutes. Uh, but before we start the webinar today, I do want to take a quick moment go over a little bit of housekeeping, and then as, uh, tell you a little bit about Meraki for those of you who might not be too familiar with the company. And then we're going to spend the majority of today's time actually talking with Luke and about his network at Red. So without further ado, I already covered our agenda for today. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the questions box, the chat or Q&A box of WebEx. I'll be periodically taking a look at them throughout today's session and then answering for the group or have having Luke answer ones that are specific to RED. I'm also pleased to announce that for all the qualified IT professionals in attendance today, we will be giving out a free 802.11 AC access point. Now this device is yours to keep. We're also giving you a three-year cloud management license. If you're curious about your eligibility details, you can go to meraki.cisco.com forward slash free AP. And in order to get that device, to really try out the features and the functionality that we're going to be talking about today, in the demo, you simply need to email to confirm your shipping information. Now you can find your representative's contact information in the reminder email that you received for today's webinar, or you can reach out at meraki.cisco.com forward slash contact. Either way works just fine, but we do need to reach out to you or have you reach out to us in order to confirm your shipping information so that we make sure the device gets to you in your hands and it doesn't end up on a random street corner somewhere. So let's go ahead and dive right in a little bit about Meraki, who we are and what we do. We are a 100% cloud managed IT company. So what does that mean? Well, we have six main product portfolios currently and they are in that graphic that you got on the left hand side there. So we have the wireless access points, indoor and outdoor models. We have our unified threat management devices. These are our security appliances. They do the job of about six different devices all in one. We have our switches, both access and aggregation switches. We have our communications portfolio, systems manager, which is our enterprise mobility management platform, and then our latest edition, which are these security cameras. Now, all six of these product lines are in constant communication with the cloud, which is doing the heavy lifting of monitoring and managing all that complex information, and then giving it to you in a very easy to understand way in Dashboard. Now, Dashboard is your browser-based management tool. So whether you you're on a desktop, a laptop, whether you download the Meraki app to use on a tablet or a phone, wherever you have internet access, you can be accessing your network, monitoring, managing, making configuration changes on the go. Now, Meraki is a leader in cloud managed networking, and we are among Cisco's fastest growing portfolios. We have over a million networks connected online at this moment, and millions of devices connecting to them on a day-to-day -day basis. So how does it all work? Well, it's a completely out-of-band control plane, so no end-user traffic passes to the cloud. Only monitoring and management data passes to the cloud. That's about one kilobit per second per device, so very minimal impact on your overall network bandwidth. And we do run for a security audits as well as daily penetration tests to ensure that ongoing security of your network. In terms of data centers, we have data centers around the globe, including three right here in Europe, and those are in Frankfurt, Munich, and Dublin. Now what that means for you as a European customer is that when you first create your Meraki organization in Dashboard, when you go to dashboard.meraki.com, you simply choose your part of the EMEA region. That's going to ensure that your data stays secure right here in Europe. It is compliant with EU privacy laws. It does not go traipsing around the world. It stays right here. And one question we get asked quite often is what about Brexit? It's a great question. As of right now, the UK has opted to continue following EU privacy laws. If that does change in the future, we'll take that on board and make any updates and changes as necessary. Now, we do have an entire section of our website dedicated to our security, our scalability, our data centers, et cetera, at meraki.cisco.com forward slash trust. So if I didn't answer a question that you might have on the tip of your tongue, go ahead and take a look at that website or reach out to your Meraki representative. We'd be more than happy to get you all the information that you need. Now, it's a very simple solution to deploy, to manage, and to maintain. And I quickly want to run through a few of these items here before we move on. Now, you have a complete end-to-end -end visibility, centralized visibility. So whether you have one site or whether you have hundreds or thousands or even 
and sites. It doesn't matter. You're going to be able to log into Dashboard and manage every single one of those sites from one central platform. You can very quickly and easily create different SSIDs, whether it's a guest SSID, whether you simply want to segment, uh, let's say, music systems, which we'll talk about later on, on your network, or different partners or vendors and things like that. So you have up to 15 different SSIDs you can completely customize in your dashboard, and you can do that in a matter of seconds. We also have a lot of analytics that are built in. So we have things, the, the ability to see the number of people that are connecting to your network versus the number of people that are simply walking by your network. That's done by gathering anonymous probes. So it's all anonymized data. We don't actually see who specifically it is. We simply know that it's a unique person or unique device. And then you can say, great, how long are they staying in association with my network? How often are they coming back? And then you have one step further of granular detail. So for the users that are connecting to your network, you can start looking at how much bandwidth they're consuming, which applications they're utilizing, what type of devices they're connecting on, and start taking actions, creating different types of traffic shaping rules or firewall rules that really define not just which users are authenticating to your network, but how exactly they're actually consuming information on the network. You also have Bluetooth integration on our wireless access points, for example. So you can actually push notifications out to users' devices that they have your mobile app on their device. And you can say, great, you're walking by our location or by a specific access point. We're going to push a piece of information out to your device. If you're in retail, maybe that's a sale offer. If you are in a corporate industry and maybe you're walking by a particular set of conference rooms, you can have the app, uh, sorry, the AP pushing out the conference room schedule to your devices, things like that. You also have high density support that's automatically and seamlessly built in, so you don't have to worry about whether you have 10 users or whether you have 100 users on your access points. So you'll easily be able to scale and manage that type of user uh, density. And these types of things that I mentioned are all available out of the box within the Rocky solution. So there's no additional cost you have to pay for. So it's a very simple, simply, very simple, sorry, licensing model. So you have the hardware itself, and then you have the license. Now, the license is not your standard license. It includes four main categories, and it does so much more than what I would think of with a typical license. So really quickly, those four main categories that I like to group things into. One, your access to the dashboard, your access to be able to remotely monitor, manage, configure your network. The second thing is your warranty. We have a lifetime warranty on the indoor access points, on your switches, on your security appliances, and a limited warranty on the outdoor access points, the communications devices, and the security cameras. The second thing that, or sorry, the third thing that your license includes is access to 24-7 dedicated Meraki support. So no matter what time of day or night you're going to call with a question, with a problem, whatever the case might be, you're going to be talking to somebody in our Sydney, London, or San Francisco offices who's going to work with you from beginning to end to find a resolution to that particular issue. And then the last thing that you get with that license is access to all future firmware and all future feature releases. So, for example, if you hypothetically purchase a device today and then next week we hypothetically release a groundbreaking new feature, you're not going to miss out. Instead, you'll receive a notification in your dashboard, via email, etc., letting you know that there's a new feature or a new update, and when, when would you like to schedule it? When's convenient for you? So a great analogy here is your smartphone. Periodically, you receive updates on your phone, letting you know that you have a new system update, and when do you want to schedule that to be pushed out? And when you do have that update and you look at your phone, shockingly, your phone is still a phone, but if you turn your phone on, you start realizing there's a lot of different updates to your phone. Maybe brand new features that you've never seen before. Maybe new and optimized features as well. So like I said, all of that is available outside of the box. And our feature velocity across all of our product portfolios is something that Meraki is extraordinarily proud of. Every quarter, releasing new things for our customers. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is the ROI. So last thing before we jump in and talk with Luke, and it's the ROI. So what we have here is a sample deployment. We just created a hypothetical situation here where we have a, a customer with 10 different locations. At each location, they have a security appliance, two switches, and about 100 access points. Now, what we looked at here is the comparison between a Meraki deployment and a previous unmanaged consumer-grade deployment, and the time and man hours accomplishing different tasks, so firmware maintenance updates, troubleshooting hours, RMA, new feature implementation. 
the gray bar that you see in this graph, that is what the time it would take for a consumer grade unmanaged device to complete these actions. The small green bar, that's the time for Meraki. Now, there's a lot of cost savings here. There's cost savings in terms of man hours, and there's also direct costs. So, for example, there's no on site controllers. That in enterprise level support is automatically included. Visibility and troubleshooting, that's included. Automatic updates of new features, that's included. And then in terms of time, it's the intuitive centralized dashboards. You don't have to go necessarily on site to make any changes or to see what's going on with your network. It's a plug and play deployment. So you can pre-configure your devices before they ever arrive on site and simply have somebody plug them in. You can utilize templates, configuration templates. So you make a configuration once and then you simply bind networks to that template and it will automatically populate those networks with the configuration of that template. We have built-in live tools like packet capture, event logs, the Meraki support, the automated firmware and feature updates, as well as the fact that there's no command line. So it's incredibly intuitive to utilize this solution. Fill in the blanks, drop down menus, click through buttons, things like that. So in terms of ROI, we're looking at about $180,000 worth of cost savings over a three-year time period. That's a half a year worth of cost savings, and that's incredible. And what that's going to allow you to do is start working on other projects that are also mission critical. Stop worrying about your IT infrastructure and start working on the other projects that you have on your plate. All right, so let's now move over to the main event of today's session, and that's talking to Luke from, from RED. So Luke, uh, if you're on the line today, it would be great if you would take a moment to introduce yourself and maybe give us a little bit of information about RED and what you guys do. Excellent. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, so just a little bit of a background behind RED. Um, we are an SAP-focused recruitment business. Um, we're not by any means a, a huge organization, but we are very niche. So 250 staff across seven offices um, and dedicated just for recruiting within the SAP industry. So very, very niche indeed. Now, um, RED as a business are uh, a business that moves uh, very dynamically and with the economy. Um, and, and this is where Meraki kind of fits for us, really. So um, given that the economy changes, obviously, a lot, and, and, and certain more so in recent years, um, we, we flex up and down based on the economy, uh, which means that we move, we move where the business is. So um, that means, essentially, that you know, we, we can increase office size, move office, uh, change location based on where the SAP business is um, and, and how they're reflecting on what, what the economy is doing at the time. So, um, like I said, you know, from a Meraki landscape, we are not, not the biggest, but um, we certainly use all of their products. Um, we started our Meraki journey about four years ago, probably in a similar position to how most of you are today in that um, we were in Thai Fire Free Access Point, actually, uh, and we were curious as to, you know, at, you know what and how cloud networking could improve our business. Um, if you think back four or five years ago, um, infrastructure was probably not at, at its best, um, and we were looking to start a digital transformation journey um, and, and head to the cloud. So we wanted to underpin our environment and, and our network with uh, a product that would essentially fit with, with our digital transformation. So we, uh, as a business with Meraki, actually, um, like I said, we, we encompass all of their products. Um, we have 15 security appliances, 16 access points, 16 switches, and we use the uh, MDM and endpoint protection and management for, for, for Meraki as well. So it's a, you know, an all-encompassing product um, that, uh, that I've certainly seen grow over the last four years. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit today about how we use it and, and how it's helped us flex our business up and down um, and really, really kind of underpins our infrastructure and given us solid foundations. And as Jackie said, it's, uh, it's all about not having to worry about your network so you can con uh, you know, concentrate on the return on its own investment, but also the value added services that you can bring in technology to your environment. So, so I think that Jackie, you've got access um, out onto our uh, onto our platform, so I'm going to show you a little bit about um, how we can move uh, devices between networks, um, and in particular, um, how recently uh, we've actually dissolved um, one part of our business, and we're going to redeploy those devices into another network. So this is this is real information, and it's quite good. So 
So whenever yeah, we're not that. so much. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Um, really quickly, I just wanted to, you already mentioned uh, most of this already. So your deployment over UV, you mentioned that you have the, pretty much the, the, the core set of products, which is phenomenal, the access points, the switches, the security appliances, the enterprise mobility management. Um, and I know we're going to talk, talk about this when we get into the demo, but, but I think I'd go ahead and just highlight some of the really interesting features, to me at least, that you guys are using. So you have for example, different segmented SSIDs for a wide variety of different uses, actually. Everything from, uh, you know, end user devices to your guests to your music system, the Sonos, uh, your content management, employee devices, things like that. Uh, you're pushing applications and providing access to certain resources, doing the Active Directory integration. Uh, content filtering, site-to-site -site VPN, connecting all of your sites together, uh, things like that. So a lot of really interesting use cases, in my opinion. Um, so now, as Luke mentioned, what I'm going to go ahead and do is share my Chrome window. Uh, before we started today's session, I actually went to dashboard.meraki.com. Um, with Luke's permission, went ahead and logged into Red's uh, dashboard. Um, so, Luke, really quickly, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what we're looking at, and then we'll start diving into uh, the content that you've prepared for today. Um, so, what we're looking at right now is Dashboard. So, like I said earlier, it's an online platform. And when you first log in, the first thing you notice is that we've integrated with Google Maps. So, you can very quickly see where your devices are deployed on a visual map. So, that's really useful, in my opinion, just to say, where are we, what's going on, these nodes will actually change color if there's any uh, updates or, sorry, any if there's any um, connection issues on either site. So, again, visually you can see what's going on with your network and dive in very quickly. You can also click into any of these networks from this drop down here, or you can also take a look at this list and take a full look at all of the different sites that you have deployed, the number of clients that are connecting to each of those sites, the amount of bandwidth usage across those sites, uh, so great for a quick gut check to say, are we running into any excess usage? Do we need to do any investigation on a site-by-site -site basis? Things like that. Um, and then also over here, I'm just going to add in a quick column here, and that's the firmware status column. This is going to show you which of your networks are up to date. If any of them have an update available, if they do, it will simply say update available. And you can click into it and start uh, tweaking when your upgrade window happens. So you can either physically schedule an update to happen or just set a window of time when that update is permitted to update on your network. Um, so I just want to quickly go through that. Um, Luke, I know that you were talking about uh, adding some networks, deleting some networks. So where would you like us to start today? That's right. Thanks, Jackie. So if you just go to organization for me, um, we're going to start with the inventory. So um, your inventory is, is all of your Meraki devices, be it your security appliances, switches, access points. Um, and in here, what you'll see is all of the devices that we purchased from, from Meraki. Um, if they're in use or not, it doesn't matter. So this is where you'll start your Meraki journey when you get your first access point. You'll come in here and you'll claim that device. So the, the device is claimed um, by the serial number. Obviously, it has its own unique MAC address. So you'll claim it in here, and it will become part of your Meraki, Meraki dashboard, if you like. Now, once it's in there, um, you then can place it into an existing network, or you can create a new network. So, Jackie, if you go to Organization for me, and then go to License Info, I'm just going to show you a little bit about the licensing before we go on to, to creating and deleting the network. So, the licensing info um, is a good one, actually. So. As uh, Jackie mentioned earlier on, you, you don't necessarily buy all of your devices at the same time. Um, if you were to open a new office or a new location or, or add an additional access point next week, the license won't, um, in, in, in normal licensing terms, would, would run over a period of maybe three or five years. Now, one of the great things about Meraki is the, the co-termination. So what it means is it, it, it will take the licensing term from each individual device, as well as the existing devices you have, and terminate them at the same date. 
Now there is a there's a little bit of wizardry behind the the, the licensing, I believe, Jackie. It's it's quite difficult to to figure out. But essentially, if you buy a device today, it it won't expire in three years from that day. All of the devices and all of the licenses get pulled together, and they have a joint co-terminating date. So you don't need to think if you've got you know a, a huge landscape with a thousand devices, you don't need to think. You know, I need to remember to renew this license tomorrow, the next one in three weeks' time, or 50 of them in June. Um, you have one termination date, so it, it's very, very good at knowing that you'll get a reminder on one day of the year for all of your devices, and you can renew them all at the same time. So, so um, Jackie, if you could just go on to the left-hand side up by network for me. Um, we're going to move away from our, our headquarters network at the moment. And we're going to go on to the um, Paris network. So uh, this is this is not a real network, um, but what it does hold is some licensing and some devices from uh, an office that we dissolved um, about a year ago. So um, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you through deleting the, the devices from that network, and then I'm going to create a new network with those devices. So. Um, so, under the Paris network, um, I think you go to it's the uh, is it View All Network? Sorry, on the, if you click on the Paris network, as you can tell, this is is not something that most organisations will do a lot because um, most organisations don't move move and close offices on a lot of time. So. If you highlight the Paris network here, as you can see, the, the network health is all red because the device has been off for some time. You can now delete the network. So this is this is obviously safe to do because the device is in here and not being used. It will give you a warning and say. I was going to say, I'm just yeah. Yeah, okay. I can click that. Yeah, already. no, this is fine. We've never had an office in Paris, so. Okay, so what this is going to do is going to move all of the devices back into your inventory. So. Um, what we can now do, um, we can look at creating a new network with all the devices. There we go. So the top devices there, which are two security appliances, two access points, and a switch. And these are, are devices that will, will ultimately be used in a new red office, uh, probably sometime in the US later in the year. So, so what I'd like to do now is create a new network from these devices. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can create a new network from scratch and design it, um, you know, from the bottom up. What you can also do is is actually clone an existing network. So, Red as a business have um, site satellite offices, if you like, which are, are very similar, you know, probably you know small amounts of people as as most businesses start. Um, and what we'll do is clone an existing network. So. There are a couple of ways you can you can set your network type. You can use um, what we call here as a, a combined hardware, where that, that's where you have basically security appliances, switches, or wireless access points all in one. Or you can separate out the networks, so you can have LAN and WAN, or you can have access points, switches, security appliances, and all, all separately. Um, as you'll see, as you may have seen in our inventory and, and a little bit earlier on, we have a mixture of the two. Um, but generally, we would probably combine all the hardware into a network because what that would do is give us a holistic view over all of the appliances, access points, and switches within that office or within that location. So, um, and generally, a lot of our offices run the same. So we have the same SSIDs, um, standard kind of uh, networking. Um, you know, there's not not anything particularly fancy about our satellite offices. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a network um, by cloning one of our existing offices. So what this will mean is it will take all of the existing settings, such as SSIDs, from the network we have in, say, our Frankfurt office, and automatically create them for us in the new location. So if you clone for me, Jackie, if you clone from um, one of our combined hardware networks, uh, let's go with uh, perhaps uh, Red New York. Perfect. And then we'll give the network name, we'll call it um, Amsterdam, say. Or, or any other any other location. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the devices that are currently in our Sorry, inventory which aren't used, and we're going to move them into that network. So as you can see at the bottom, the available devices, we have two security appliances, one switch, and two access points. So we're going to select all of those and then create the network. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have permission. Ah, but, okay. But. <laughs> All right. No problem. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Well, it, at, at this point, it's basically creating the network would happen automatically. So it would take a matter of seconds, and it would take you straight into on the left-hand side where you have networks. You'd have um, Amsterdam or, or Red Amsterdam. So if you go if you go to the London HQ network, um, we'll assume that this was the network we just created. And what it will do is it will copy, um, and then if you go to, let, let's start with security appliance, and then dressing and VLANs. Okay, so if, if we assume that this is, this is what just happened, so we created a new network, which was a clone of our existing uh, New York network, what it will do is it will automatically create everything exactly the same. Now, bear in mind, these devices aren't plugged in, and, and they're not going to, to get connectivity until we've made a few other minor configuration changes, such as the, the default uh, subnet, as, uh, if you like. So um, what we'll do is we can start then going through configuring the, the uh, internal and external IP addresses of the devices. Um, and actually, Jackie, if you click on under routing, the first route where the 10.10 .10 default local VLAN network is, So what we would do here is we would set the local MX IP. So this is the, the internal LAN IP of the security appliance or the firewall. Um, so we'd set that as, as whatever subnet we wish. Um, we, we obviously can't, can't do it today, but uh, we'd set it as maybe 10.11.1.1 and, and the same subnet, and we click update. Now, bearing in mind that obviously these, these devices are more than likely in transit, so they're probably being shipped to a location. So none of these settings would actually take effect until the devices essentially are plugged in, they gain access to the Meraki cloud, um, and they start communicating. At that point, it, it automatically would pull the, all those settings onto the device. So we set the IP in the subnet. Um, we can then start uh, removing any or adding any site-relevant info. So if you just uh, go back to security appliance for me, Jackie, and then on to uh, firewall, Okay, so these are all um, specific rules that are set on our London network to allow either traffic into the into the business or, or within the network. So a lot of them won't be relevant to um, the, the the new the new Amsterdam network. As you can see there at the bottom, we've got you know a, a, an internal block on a Sonos sound network. Um, that that Sonos system is not available in Amsterdam, obviously. So we we can remove that. Um, so this is where we start making the initial change. And like I said, you can do all of these things whilst the devices are, are shipping to the new location. Um, so if you keep scrolling down for me, so we're not we're not going to remove anything today because obviously this is a live network. So um, I don't want to stop my uh, my manager's sound working in his office, for example. So a lot of NAT rules um, and, and public porting rules are there, which are set for specific services that we have for some of our on-premise architecture. Um, and a lot, like I said, a lot of them won't be relevant to the Amsterdam network. So we can remove and add as we need. Um, and when the device is finally plugged in, it will pull that configuration onto the devices and start working more straight away. So uh, one of the things to note, um, obviously because, um, because you've cloned the network um, with the same subnet or IP address of an existing network, it will not it will not create any VPNs between any of your sites until that subnet has changed and you turn on the and turn essentially turn the VPN on. VPN on. Now, obviously, um, with with other equipment and, and other providers over the years, you've had to manually create um, VPNs between your sites. One of the great features of Meraki is is Auto VPN. So what it will do is it will automatically mesh. Uh, and all of the VPNs together and, and give you connectivity between all of your sites. Um, 
You can obviously specifically say what sites you want to create VPNs to, um, but most businesses will obviously mesh together and, and have connectivity between all the sites. So. There you go. So you can see there, second option down, uh, VPN tunnels established with all hubs and dependent spokes. Um, if you click spoke, you can actually then change to, you know, just having a, net, a, a VPN between uh, Amsterdam and London, or Amsterdam, London and Paris, or Amsterdam, London and Munich. Um, but obviously, for our, for our business, we, we have an internal, internal telephony system. Um, you can... Um, you can obviously, uh, it's more than likely for, for most businesses, you'll, you'll want to connect all of your sites together essentially. So um, so just, just finishing up on, on the security appliance part. Um, so Jack, if you go to security appliance for me, and then go to appliance status. Now, Red as a business are, are, are quite hot on uh, redundancy. And one of the great features of the security appliance system for Meraki is that it has a, a, a warm, spare kind of status. So you can have two appliances with either the same or different internet providers configured. And what it will do is a heartbeat will monitor between them and to the Meraki cloud um, and say the master is up, the primary ISP is up, um, and only when that's um, you know compromised, i.e. I, your ISP is down, the spare will kick in. It's actually a matter of seconds for the new device to kick in and take over with the same internal IP, um, potentially the same public IP if you've configured both ISPs on both of the security appliances, or in our case, we've actually got um, an alternative ISP on the alternative, on the spare firewall. Um, so that device comes active in, in a matter of seconds. Your, your internet connectivity essentially starts working straight away. Um, but what's even better is that all the VPNs that were created on your primary ISP, on your primary firewall, will fail over to the secondary firewall and the secondary ISP as well. Now, a lot of organizations tend to invest in, in quite bulky, uh, intensive, and, and difficult to configure monitoring systems. The one thing that we liked about Meraki is that a majority of our, our monitoring is now done within Meraki. Um, so if you click on uplink for me, Jackie, what we can get is quite a whole host of information about our our infrastructure. Now this in particular is a security appliance. So we can see the uplink traffic being used throughout the course of the day um, or over, over a certain period. And we can see whether the latency was high, so whether the bandwidth was being used or, or the ISP had problems. Um, and we can really just get more or less everything we need from this dashboard view. Um, and obviously the monitoring that comes with Meraki enables us to get notified um, if there are problems um, should there be. Um, just to give you an idea, in the last four years since we've been using Meraki, um, we've had no failed devices. We've only failed over on one site once uh, because of an ISP failure. Um, so a mixture of choosing a good provider and, and Meraki, uh, especially in the primary kind of warm spare scenario, means that you're permanently connected and even if you're not, you'll get the notification to tell you that you weren't and how, how you weren't. So it's, uh, it's really an all-encompassing solution, uh, essentially. Okay, so mo moving out of the security appliance, obviously when we created the, the network just a little while ago, we added in switches and wireless, uh, wireless devices. Um, we'll just talk briefly about switches um, because this is a little bit more of an in-depth conversation. Um, but if you click on switches for me, Again, you get the same kind of look and feel as in the security appliance, and you can see all of the switches, all of their connectivity. Um, so Jackie, if you go to the, the, the primary switch, that core switch, which is switch 001 for me. Um, so this is our headquarters core switch. Now what you can do is you can see the, the, the current usage on the network on, on that switch in particular. This one's a little bit higher than the others because all of our, all of our servers and everything else go through this. Uh, but you can see if there are any problems over the last day. Um, you can see really interesting information, not so much for us, but for some organizations about how much power the switch is drawing. Um, you know, so if, if you have you know, a, a big site or you're in a data center, for example, where you, you have a lot of switches, 
the amount of power you're drawing can be monitored. Um, and it even tells you exactly what amount of power is being drawn from a particular switch. Uh, actually, if you, Jackie, if you can move on to one of the other switches for me, uh, because this being the core switch means it doesn't have any PoE devices on it. Um, uh, potentially on, on maybe maybe on four or five. Um, okay, I'm slightly uh, there. We go, perfect. So you can see on this icon here, so all the green ones are the switch ports that are actually in use at the moment and they have devices connected. Um, if you move the mouse over one of the switch ports for me, Jackie, with the yellow electricity icon, that's symbolizing that it's a PoE device. Um, and then if you click on that actual switch port, you can see how much um, traffic is being used for it. Um, you can see the amount of uh, power that's being drawn from that device. And in some cases, if the device um, is able to notify or let Meraki know what it is, whether it broadcasts, you can actually tell what it is. So you can see that this is a Polycom conference phone. Um, and you can tell what clients are actually connected to it as well. So you know that this is Andy Duke, this is one of our employees, that's his uh, conference phone in his office. Um, and that, that username or that account is being used to access that device, it's drawing that much data, and this is the amount of traffic it's being used. Um, so you really get a holistic view over all of the information that's going on. Just another thing you can do is the, the topology. Um, so if you click on show on the left hand side for me, um, just just on the on the switch itself. Thank you. And if you click on label all devices, so it will highlight in, in bold or green that, that particular switch. And it will tell you where it sits within your network topology. So you know that it's connected to the core switch. You know that one of the access points, access point 05, is connected to that switch. But more importantly, you can tell exactly how many ports are connected and running on that switch. And you can tell how many people are connected to it to which access point and where it sits. And it gives you all of the access points and switches within your, your network. So you get a real overarching view of every device within, within your Meraki network. Okay, so uh, moving, on to, moving on to wireless. And what we'll do here is you go to SSID for me. So we, we have five access points in this office. And these are our SSIDs. They all have varying names and they all have varying encryption options. Um, some have particular kind of IP assignments. Um, some are segregated from the network. Some have specific tagging or, or um, internal VLAN configuration to allow certain access. Um, so as an example, we've got our red guest network. Now this is just a, a, a WPA2 encryption with, with a pre-shared key. Um, and this allows all of our red employees to add their personal phones or any guests that we have on the network to connect, but we're being completely segregated from our network. Now, obviously, iOS updates are, are getting bigger by the day. Um, if someone wanted to do the iOS firmware update of their mobile phone on, on the network and, and all of their apps updates, it could be a couple of gigabytes in data. Now, obviously, um, we don't want our users, you know, killing our bandwidth because they're, they're, they're doing their app updates every day. So what we've done, we've put a bandwidth limitation on that particular SSID, um, which means that they don't, that they can't kill our network and they can't, you know, use all of our bandwidth basically. So the, the benefit of um, having multiple SSIDs is that you can you can create an SSID which is available within one network, or you can you can mimic it and copy it across to all networks. Um, and actually, when you make a change to that network or to that SSID, for example, it can update to the devices in a matter of seconds on across all of your networks. Um, additionally, what you can see there is a per SSID bandwidth limit or per client bandwidth. So we've got a per client bandwidth there, which means that a maximum of 10 meg can be used. Uh, one of the great features as well, we can see there, which is speed burst, allows um, users to get, I think it's a 10 second um, yeah, 10 seconds uh, speed burst. That means that 
it won't affect uh, kind of uh, things like video streaming or um, general internet access. But if they want to download a file that is you know 50 meg in size, they can do it very quickly. If it's a five terabyte download that they're doing, it'll get 10 seconds of extreme speed, and then it will limit it to the 10 meg. So it means that people's day-to-day -day usage on the network on the wireless isn't affected. But we also know that there won't be any bandwidth intense applications being used or, or intensive downloads. So perfect. So one of the other things you can do is is um, obviously with with all mobile networks is stop people seeing some of the uh, uh, networks that they need to. So if you click on SSID availability for me, okay. So this red guest network is obviously publicly seen on our access points. But if you move to uh, red CMS corridor, I think. Okay. So this availability means that this SSID is only transmitting to access points that have a tag called corridor. So that means that one access point has, given, been, has been given a tag called corridor, and that access point is transmitting that SSID only on that, on that access point. That means that the, that SSID is not available on access points where we don't want it to be available to. One of the other great features is um, being able to turn the SSID availability off. I'm happy if you do this on our on our network. So under schedule availability where it says disable, Jackie, if you go to enable, what we can do is we can make that SSID available just between the core working hours, say eight till six, for example. Um, there's an existing template you can use there. You can just drag the dial to make it available for different days. Now obviously most most wireless networks don't, to be, don't need to be available through the night or, or on the weekends. Um, and you can do it on a, dirt, a per day schedule or, or per hour schedule, uh, or is it every 15 minutes actually. Uh, that means that we don't need to worry about the network being compromised on a weekend if, if you know someone was outside trying to hack our network. I wouldn't imagine they would do, but you, you never know in this day and age. So. Perfect. Okay, so if we go back to um, uh, a slightly different network, I'm going to show you the last piece in the puzzle for us, which is the endpoint and MDM management. So first off, Jackie, if you go to the mobile network, red mobile network, now we use this to, to manage our organization's um, mobile devices. We're predominantly iOS, but of recent we've been adding Android devices in. Um, and if you click on the, the top user, which is Alan Didlick, you can see it's an iPhone, um, an iPhone user. What we can do is we can get a lot of information about this user and where they are. So I currently know more or less where this person's phone is, um, which is great from a data protection perspective. Um, I can tell uh, what what number he's on. Um, what IP address he's using, if he's connected to Wi-Fi, um, how much space he has left on his phone, and if he's, if he's compliant or not, which means that we, we obviously can roll out applications specific to our business to his phone. I can tell if he's missing any of those applications. Perfect. Okay, so that, like I said, can be, can be mimicked for for, my, uh, for, for all mobile devices, in particular, we use it for iOS and, and uh, Android. I'm now going to show you the device management of our um, desktop infrastructure. So, Jackie, if you could move to Red Systems for me. So there is a an endpoint client that is installed on all of our PCs, desktop, and, and laptop devices. Um, and this gives essentially the same information um, about what the machine is doing. Um, if you find for me a, a laptop, so this one there, there uh, the fourth, fifth one down for me, Jackie. So that laptop there. Okay, so we know that this person was connected about a day ago and that they're somewhere in Canada. That's correct. Um, we also know what antivirus the spyware, what firewalls running on the, on the machine. Um, we know how much free 
C drive space, when they've been online. Uh, we can even remote control and connect to the machine, um, send them notifications, take a screenshot of what they're currently doing, and get network statistics about what they're doing, i.e. what wireless network they're connected to if necessary. So whilst it might not necessarily be the most uh, comprehensive endpoint management system, one of the benefits is, is if one of these users in, in the office, we can map out what access point they're connected to, what switch port they're connected to, how much data they're using, and we know exactly what every device on our network is currently doing. Um, Jackie, if we head back to one of the devices that may be connected to our network, Uh, did you want which one are you looking at here? Uh, if you add a add a column, um, or actually we've got current SSID. So if you if you just fill by filter by it, it, in there where you can search, you can actually just add. You can type in the SSID there. So if you do um, red CMS, okay. So this will this will show us all devices currently connected to our red CMS network. Um, and it's great for understanding who's connected to what. Now we know that this network is, is a content management system network um, and the only devices connected to it are specific devices that are, are running our content management system. So you click on one of those devices, you can still see the same amount of information as you could before, but you know what Wi-Fi network it is. Perfect. So you can really see that if you take out the entire suite of Meraki tools, you can get a real holistic view from what your devices and users are doing, how much data they're transferring, where they are, whether they're connected to Wi-Fi or uh, via a, a hardwired via a switch, um, how much traffic they're using. There's a lot of information that can be pulled. Um, perfect. So that, that's it, really. Um, so in terms of actually you know, segregating your network, that was something that was done a little bit by choice for us um, and, 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 and one thing that actually pushed our hand. So we, we have a, a, a multiple of different kind of uh, Meraki security appliances based on the size of our sites. Uh, the bigger offices have MX100, which are obviously the larger devices, whereas the smaller ones have MX64W, which is the one that incorporate wireless to them. This is for very small satellite offices that we have. Um, and I believe that the, the MX64W is the only one that can't be combined into combined hardware networks. So, um, but ultimately, what you should have is, is a single network for each location. And within that network, you can see everything that goes on. So that, that's about it for me. Um, there's obviously a, a lot more features. Um, obviously, there's things like threat protection and, and, and traffic shaping that be, can be done. Um, we saw earlier that you can you could limit the amount of data that people can use, um, and a couple of the good features that are used in the security appliance, which which is essentially malware protection and uh, content filtering. So you can stop users accessing or in a specific network stop stop them accessing a specific site or specific set of sites, and you can set your rules for threat protection to be between a balanced kind of um, rule set or you can be more protective or whatever um, and essentially the monitoring gives you an idea of what what people are trying to do from outside of your network so to this day we, we we've always been notified of, of things and obviously with uh, you know cyber security a relatively hot sub subject at the moment we found that Meraki ultimately gives us uh, the peace of mind that we need knowing that will be notified when, there, when there's something going on. Um, so I won't take you through the security center right now. It's a little bit more of an in-depth chat about um, you know, keeping an eye on what's going on on your network. Um, but there's, there's plenty, plenty of white papers that can be, can be seen on what, what's done here. So, so yeah, so that's, that's IDS, so your intrusion detection, and, and IPS, which is your intrusion prevention system that work hand in hand with each other. And then obviously advanced malware protection, which presents, uh, uh, prevents any viruses essentially coming in by the web. Now, obviously, you know we still have malware protection and, and antivirus on our machines, but this is just an, an additional layer that's that's done at the the security appliance level essentially. So, 
Is there anything else that um, you'd like me to show, Jackie, or, or, or talk through? No, you did an absolutely amazing job. So, Luke, thank you so, so much. Um, I, I wanted to quickly highlight, you mentioned white papers and guides and whatnot that can help with people with questions about how to do this, that, the other thing. You also mentioned the licensing earlier. So I wanted to do a quick plug for documentation.rocky.com. This is our knowledge base uh, that our engineering team keeps up to date. So if you do have questions about what to do with licensing, or if I just go back a couple pages here, let's just go back to the home site. You also do have get started guides for each of the different products. I mean, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, if you have a question, you can just type it into this documentation box up here, and it'll do a quick query of our systems um, and let it let you know what's going on. Uh, you also have the ability, if you come back into dashboard here, under help, if you do miss whatever reason a new feature that we were talking about, you can click under the new features tab and actually have a full list of all of the new features that we've been releasing. Uh, so you can just start kind of going back through them and see if there's anything that's applicable to you, uh, things like that. So that's all built in. Uh, Luke, again, I mean, you did just an amazing job with that demo, so thank you so, so much. Um, I just want to take the last couple of minutes um, and quickly go through the different uh, product lines that we have here. So we've talked through them in quite detail, uh, quite a bit of detail already, but just as a reminder, the access points, the security appliances, the switches, the enterprise mobility management, or MDM, whichever you'd like to call it, communication security conference, all of those are managed via one centralized platform. So it's not like you have to learn and understand multiple different types of platforms and click through a lot of different things. As we saw with, with Luke's dashboard, it's what he called the combined network. We're glad to see all the different products you have deployed within each of your networks and manage them holistically. Um, then the last thing I just wanted to point out here are your next steps. So we do offer free trials on every single product that Meraki has on offer. So if you live in Egypt, we'll give you complimentary shipping both ways. So we'll ship the devices out to you and then give you free return shipping on the way back so that there's no risk at all in trialing any product that you just have a question about or think is interesting. Just let us know. Um, you can let your representative know when you contact them to request your free AP, or you can go to meraki.cisco.com forward slash eval. Um, like I said, to request the free access point, information and a reminder email you received for today's webinar. We'll also be sending up a follow-up email that also has a contact information. If for some reason you've missed both of those, I do apologize, but you can also go to meraki.cisco.com forward slash contact and just fill out a quick contact us form and your rep will be right on out to you. And then the last thing here is keep an eye on our website and our blog. This is where we talk about a lot of new features. We talk about new products. We also have different use case scenarios. So if you're curious about how can you do X, Y, and Z in this environment, we might have a blog post written on it. Just do a quick search on what you're interested in and it can pop up there as well. So that's all the content I had for today. I know questions have been streaming in. I've been trying to answer them as they come in. Um, you know, Luke, a lot of comments are just saying thank you so much. Uh, so great job that you've been doing here. Um, let me do a quick uh, scan real quick and see if there's any other questions that just quickly pop up here. Um, let's see. Uh, if Luke, you might be able to answer this. Um, if you have multiple SSIDs, does that in any way restrict the internet access to your router, or are you good to go on that front? Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, well, it depends on the, the bandwidth limitations we set on every SSID, so um, no, not at all. I mean, it, it, it's still the same amount of devices connected internally, so not not at all, as, as Jackie mentioned. Perfect. The, the heartbeat information that's set, sent back to the Meraki dashboard uh, is, is, what, one kilobyte? Uh, per second or whatever, it's it's a minor amount of information that doesn't increase on the amount of SSIDs you have. Um, so if you have 15 SSIDs and 100 people, it's the same as one SSID and 100 people, so it wouldn't make a difference, no. Great. Um, let's see, I have a question that I can answer really quickly, uh, asking about updating firewall policies and propagating to different sites. So uh, each of the different sites would have their own firewall, and each of those firewalls would have their own policies. 
what you could do is if you want them to propagate all the other sites with just one update, is you could create a configuration template and you just have the different sites bound to that template. In that case, you would just make an update once to that firewall policy and it would propagate to all the other sites that you have. Um, let's see here. How do you set the normal policy values for wireless clients? Um, that, as uh, we saw with Luke, is just going to be done under access policy. So I don't think we actually showed that particular page, but it's right here under wireless and you can click under access control and it's going to be done on a per SSID level. That's going to be the base policies for your clients, how they're associating with your network, what exactly they're doing on your network is going to be then handled by the firewall and traffic shaping page. All right, we probably have time for one more question. Um, asking, does Meraki integrate with third party security or monitoring tools? I can go ahead and take this one. Uh, sorry, there's two other questions. I just saw a great one that came in, so I'll answer that one as well. So in terms of integration, uh, yes, we do. We also have a lot of API calls. That if you're interested in setting that up, um, you definitely can integrate Meraki via APIs. If you have questions about APIs, you can come up here to the help section, and there's actually an entire section of dashboard that's populated for API documentation. Um, so that is going to be a great tool for uh, propagating and integrating with other systems. And the last question I just saw that I do want to take a moment to answer is, is Meraki linked into Talos? Um, so that's one of Cisco's security uh, portfolios. And the answer to that is absolutely, yes. That is something that is integrated with the Meraki systems is Talos. All right, I think that's all the time we had. If we didn't answer your questions, I do apologize. We will be sending all of these out to your Meraki representative. So when you do call in to confirm your shipping information for that uh, free access point, your representative will have the questions that you asked and you can ask any other questions that you might have thought of in the interim um, and we'll be happy to get those answered for you. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, Luke, thank you so much for your time and the great presentation that you gave today. And I really no do worries. hope that we hear from all of you very, very soon. So thank you again and speak with everyone soon. Have a great day.